Hi guys, uh, my name is Nobu Kumalo. If it's your first time, welcome to the channel. And if you're coming back, welcome back. I hope you're doing great. And this is part three of a three part series about investing in property. For those of you who have already watched part one and two, you will know that we ended off part two when I've, you know, accepted you know, I have an accepted offer from from the seller of the property and I hand it back over to my mortgage broker or the bank if you haven't watched part one and two please watch them so that this part makes sense but before we get into the whole process um I actually have to me my friend from uni here today as promised uh, I'll let her introduce herself but she's a dear friend of mine who went to uni you know together and she's currently working in a convincing uh, department in, in the law firm and she is the best person to talk to us about this so i won't try and and and, and you know introduce her i'll just let her speak for herself because like she's a lawyer like me so as lawyers we like to speak so <laughs> so hi to me welcome to the channel hi nobu um thanks for having me i appreciate the call for asking me to come through um my name is Wutume Elo Dumi. Many people call me Dumi. I'm an admitted attorney at the Notary in Public. I got admitted last year, July, and have been practicing as an attorney and notary for the past year, basically. Um, I'm an associate at one of the biggest convincing law firms in Pretoria, and that's basically what that's me. Okay, great. So, Dumi, you are working at a convincing law firm, and I think you did you did tell me that you are working on your convincing exams i think you're writing later but i'm sure like in your year of practice you, you you pretty much know what this process is like now right so like i said earlier i have uh i wanted to buy this property i've made an offer the seller has accepted and you know good to go i go back to my bank and i'm like okay cool this property is the the you know the seller has accepted for me to buy it at 650 here's the accepted offer can you tell us where you come in as a conveyancer? What is your role in this whole property uh, buying you know, process? Okay, so basically how the whole process works is that there's like three sets of attorneys as a starting point. You have your transferring attorneys, you have your bond attorneys, then you have your bond cancellation attorneys. Okay. So the whole process is kick-started by the transferring attorneys because they receive the transfer instruction, basically. So as you've said, you've already signed the OTP, you've already um, received your bond approval from the bank. Then what happens is the transferring attorney is either approached by an estate agent or the seller themselves. So then they'll come to us, um, let us know, okay, here's an OTP we've signed, we have uh, a contract, there's an offer to purchase, can we start the process? And then um, what happens then is that we will then initiate it. We will send an initiation letter to the seller and to the purchaser just to confirm that we've received an instruction that person A is purchasing property from a so-and-so person. And then um, we'll do a deed search basically. We'll do a deed search just to ascertain that who the rightful owner of the property is. Because we need to do, there's checks and balances that we also need to uh, get in order as well. Yes. Then we'll do a deed search, we'll send out our initiation letter, um, initial letter, sorry, send the initial letter, and we also then just need to review the contract because we need to make sure that the contract is, in fact, a legally binding contract, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we also need to check for any suspensive conditions that apply. Mm -hmm. Mostly, in most cases, the suspensive, the suspensive condition is that the purchaser needs to get a loan, basically. Okay. And then, um, yes, basically. So in this case, then, a suspensive condition has been made. You've got a loan. And then what happens is the bank, so the bank that's uh, giving you this loan, will then also appoint their own attorneys to register mm -hmm. the bond. Can I, can I stop you a bit and, and ask a question? I think you touched a bit on like deep searching to make sure um, that the person claiming to sell is actually the, the owner. For, for myself as a, as a buyer, are there any public, you know, I don't know, public registers or something that I can check for myself just to be sure that, you know, this person is actually selling me a property they own or am I just supposed to like, or is it enough for me to just, you know, trust you guys as the conveyancers for that? Um, like it is enough to trust us, 
Because once we receive it, we do a whole property um, search. Is that the, it's basically on the deeds office. You need to have a kind of, there's a, there's a program that we use, um, mm -hmm. Indeed. That's where we do our deed search um, deed searches. And then we do mm -hmm. run a search there, then it'll, it'll pop up there. It'll show the history of the property, then it'll show who the current owner of the property is. Then it'll also show if there's any existing bond holder on the property as well, okay. or if there are any interdicts that could be um, hindering the transfer of the property. Okay, cool, cool. All right, go ahead. Okay, so once we've done the deed searches, then <clears throat> we've ascertained, okay, fine, the seller is the rightful um, seller owner of the property. And then we'll just check any deposit that should be paid, whether it's been paid. If not, then in our initial letter that we sent, we'll just remind you as well that there's a deposit that is due on such and such a date. And then that's what needs to happen. After that, the, the bond attend the bank then appoints their own bond attorneys. Mm -hmm. isn't it? So once the bank has already appointed their bond attorneys, we will then um mm -hmm. so the bank will then appoint their own um, bond attorneys to basically attend to the registration of the bond. And then we will, as the transferring attorneys, then request cancellation figures. We'll request cancellation figures from the bond attorneys. That's basically just the outstanding amounts that needs to be paid for that bank to cancel their bond. Okay, so, so if I hear you correctly, right, I am purchasing a property probably that this person bought, I don't know, 10 years ago, right? And then they may be on a 20-year bond, and then now they want to sell it, right? So bond cancellation, this is where that initial bank that has a, you know, the initial mortgage obviously needs their money before they, like, sell it on to someone. So the bond cancellation attorneys are the ones who come in to say, this is the outstanding amount that will need to be paid, and and... Whose, whose problem is it? Is it is it my problem or is it the seller's problem? Who who pays no, that? No, that's the seller. Okay. That's the seller's problem. Yes. Okay. That's the seller's problem basically. And in most cases, so for example, we're going to request cancellation figures from the uh, bond cancellation attorneys, right? And then we're also going to request guarantees from the okay. new um, bank, so from the new bondholder basically. Okay. Because in most cases. Um, the balance, what we receive from the guarantees, essentially also then covers the cancellation figures as well. Okay. okay. So basically, like the new bond, because isn't it the purchase, the, the seller will be receiving proceeds for selling the property. So then it's money yeah. that they will be receiving to cover that. To cover that. Okay. Okay. So, all right. All right. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Go on. Yeah. So then, um, yes, fine. Then we request the cancellation figures and we also request the um, guarantees from the new bond holder. After that, then we ready to draft the documents. So in our, in our initial letter that we sent to the purchaser and the seller, we request FICA documentation as well, because okay. that's also just part of our checks and balances as well, you know. What's that? Um, we, 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 are, we are obligated to basically FICA any clients that you interact with or get into business with. So we'll need, for example, your identity document, your proof of address, latest proof of address, um, income tax number, marriage certificate if you are married, and an actual contract if you are married out of com uh, community of property. Um, this also differs depending on the person that you're dealing with. So if it's a company, we'll need your company documents, basically. Okay. The trust. Okay. The trust. Yeah. So, um, and that's what usually can also cause a delay in the transferring process, because usually the process can be about three months. Okay. Three months can be three months, it can be less, it can be more. And the delays, for example, would be once we've sent the initial letter requesting um, FICA documentation, the clients can take forever, basically, to send yeah. their document. And that actually then delays the whole process because we need those documents also to draft the transfer document and the bond documents that you'll be signing. So the longer you take to send us those documents, the longer it will take for us to draft your documents and the longer mm -hmm. it will take for you to be able to sign your documents. Okay. So I think that that's a tip. If you're, if you're, either the, so this is for both buyer and seller, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether you're buying or selling a property, like, I know we like to say, you know, coming from someone who's bought property, they just say, okay, these guys are so slow, but like, do the bit that you can to make sure that like your process goes fast. So if you ask for the documents, like surely it's documents that you should ideally have, right? Because they they are everything to do with with your person. You have your ID, you have a utility yeah. bill or something, you have your marriage certificate. You know, just 
be quickly like bundling up those things and, and sending them across so that your your process moves faster. Okay, cool. So now I've sent you my documents. Uh, then you start drafting the and what are these documents that you're drafting? It's it's various documents. You know, there's a power of attorney that um, will need to be drafted that you also need to sign. We also draft the deed of transfer. We also draft this different affidavits as well okay. um, that also need to be drafted and you need to sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, cool. So these documents also differ um, slightly to the documents that also need to be signed on the side of the bank. Because okay. remember, there's, there's three sets of attorneys that are involved, as I had said. It's the transferring attorneys, it's the bond attorneys, it's the bond cancellation attorneys. So they will all have different sets of documents that need to be drafted and signed by the respective people. Mm -hmm. So once we've drafted our documents, we give you a call, we set up an appointment with you, and then you come to the office to sign. That's another delay as well. <laughs> um, the appointment, you know, you, you contact clients, you ask them, okay, your documents are ready, we're ready for you to sign, when can you come in to sign? Because unfortunately, the documents do need to be signed in person. You do need to come to our offices, or we can come to your house if possible, or we can meet at a common place where we can sign the document. So some clients will delay, oh, no, I'm not available this week. Oh, no, I'm working till late. Oh, no. So that delay in itself also then delays your process. So mm -hmm. instead of it taking maybe three months or less, then it will take longer. You know, yeah. so the sooner that, um, the sooner that you avail yourself, to come and sign the documents, the better and the quicker that you, the process can basically move. So um, I'm, I'm laughing because that is almost exactly what happened with us, right? So obviously, because we're buying a property like in SA and we're here, this side in the UK. Mm -hmm. So in August, I went for my sister's wedding and I think we had done in such a way that I can sign for the both of us or something. But then on, but I was only like an essay for a very short time. And I think on the Friday, I said I couldn't get hold of, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I ended up not signing in August. And now we're in this limbo of where there are these documents that need to be signed. And we're like, we don't know when next we're going, <laughs> we're going to be an essay. So you can imagine from August, I think we only signed end of November. That is when we were able to like be in SA and like for, for a short period of time in Jobek and like sign the document. So like, so August, you know, September, October, November. So we, we literally delayed our process ourselves by like three months. But I think it's understandable because we're not in the country, but like you're saying, you know, people mm -hmm. make all sorts of excuses, right? Like, oh, I'm at work mm -hmm. or I, you know, I don't have a car, I can't drive, etc. So it's, yeah, those are other things that you, you need to be aware of so that you like quicken your, your process. So I've come, I've made time finally and I've come to sign, what happens after that? Okay, you've come to sign, uh, everything is in order. Um, with the transfer documents, it's a, it's a very simple thing. You sign the documents, you're done. We're good to go, we check the documents, everything is fine. Whereas on the bond side of the, of the signing is that you will sign the documents, and then they obviously need to check that the documents are correct, you know, and then the documents need to also then be sent to the bank. Then it follows another procedure on the bank side. And the mm -hmm. banks uh, usually have very different procedures. So I don't want to get into that because I feel like that will um, genuinely just confuse a lot of people. But mm -hmm. um, once the documents have been sent, um, before that, uh, before I just finish with the part where the bank has accepted the documents and they're ready to go, there's three certificates basically that uh, we also basically need to apply for. There's the clearance certificate. Mm -hmm. um, the clearance certificate is basically uh, we need to apply for clearance figures for the municipality account. So basically, it's just to ensure that because we're ensuring that the new owner of the property gets the house without any dates um, okay. connected to it. So the municipality just it's just to ensure that any outstanding debts that were due, any outstanding rates and taxes that were due, are paid up. You know, mm -hmm. so we will apply for clearance figures from the at the municipality. If there's a body corporate or homeowners association as well, then we'll also apply um, for the clearance figures for that as well. And then there's the transfer duty as well, because we also need to lodge a transfer duty receipt. So either it's the transfer duty receipt or an exemption certificate if it's not applicable. So with the transfer duty, transfer duty takes about 21 working days for us to receive it. So once you've paid the applicable transfer duty, properties that are less than a million rand 
there's no transfer duty payable there. But if your property is more than that, then there is transfer duty that will be levied. Then um, the, the sooner the purchaser also pays that transfer duty, the better as well, because then the quicker we can get the transfer duty received. So let's say if I'm already um, paid for the transfer duty, we've received that. And then we've applied for clearance figures at the municipality and also the body corporate levies, if, if that is applicable. We receive that and then the seller is the one who has to pay for those. So the seller pays for that and then we wait and we receive the clearance certificate for both, which would be the municipal account, the rates clearance certificate, and then also the clearance certificate for the body corporate then we are good to go. Now we've got all three, the transfer duty, clearance certificate, rate clearance certificate, and the clearance certificate for the body corporate. Yeah. And then um, now we just need to ensure that everything is good on our side. So the bank will also ensure, the bank also just sends inspectors as well, because remember the bank has a financial interest. Interest in the property. Yeah. yeah. They have a financial interest in the property, so they're not just going to do whatever, you know, okay, fine, you got the loan, fine, it's good. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to send inspectors, they will evaluate the property, ensure that everything is fine. And then we wait to receive a proceeds, so something that mm -hmm. they call a proceed. So once the bank has provided us with the proceed, then we mm -hmm. are ready to launch. Then okay. we compile our documents because um, the process also, it runs simultaneously. So it runs okay. simultaneously between the transferring attorneys the bond attorneys and the bond cancellation attorneys. Okay, okay. Yes, because all three need to be registered on the same day. So the three sets of attorneys basically communicate. So okay. They communicate, is your side fine? You know, the transferring attorneys will state, are you are you good? They'll say, okay, no, we're good. They're on the bond side, the bonds, are you good? Then maybe they'll say, no, we're still waiting for the proceeds from the bank. Then the process stops, basically. We need to wait uh -huh. for that process. Okay. You know, and then um, once all of that is sorted, everyone is fine, then we lodge at the deeds office on the same day. Okay. And then that starts a whole new process, basically we would call the deeds office per process procedure. Mm -hmm. You know, we lodge the documents and then they go through different levels once it's at the deeds office. Uh -huh. you know, once it's there, it gets checked by the various examiners who have a level one examiner, level two examiner. They will check. Um, if there's anything, you know, if they do query anything, they'll raise a note. They'll raise a note. Mm -hmm. That can also put a bit of a halt in the process okay. as well. Because then if there's a note that is raised, the conveyancer needs to answer to that note before mm -hmm. the property can be adjusted. Mm -hmm. So let's say if there are no notes, there are no rejections, then the property gets on prep. That's what we call okay. prep. So once okay. it's on prep, they're telling you everything is fine. You can mm -hmm. register your property, but you basically then have five days because then once it's on prep, it has to register within five days. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so you have five days to ensure, check, do you have your full uh, purchase price, essentially? Mm -hmm. Do you really have the proceed, you know, and everything? If that is fine, property registers within that five days and then mm -hmm. you could. So at this stage, after it's, it's, it's registered, then transfer of ownership has happened, basically. Yes. Once it's registered, transfer of ownership has already registered. Um, mm -hmm. What basically happens, then we'll send you um, a confirmation, email confirmation letter, you know, just letting you know um, that your property has registered in your name on such and such a date. And then if it's a cash buyer, if it's a cash buyer, we will then wait for to receive the, the title deed from the deeds office, and then we will arrange collection of the title deed or deliver it to you. But in the case where there's a bond, for example, in this instance, we'll receive the title deed, but then we'll only send you a copy of the title deed because okay. the, the original copy goes to the bank because, because they hold that as security. Yes, uh, that's how okay. the security for the debt. And then once you've paid off your, your full loan, you've paid off everything, then the bank will then hand over the title deed to you. Okay, that's quite an it was quite an interesting process. So if there are no delays and the you know the buyers and the sellers were good participating you know parties and they gave you everything that you need, roughly what is the length that I'm looking at? I know obviously there are a lot of factors, but roughly how how long does this process take if everything has gone seamlessly? Um, honestly, we don't like to to say it will take you two months. 
for your property yeah. to register. Or it will take you one month for your property yeah. to register. Because we on we would take there's a lot of things that come into play, you know. Okay. Um especially also on the side of the deeds office as well, because there can be delays on the deeds office. Side. On the deeds office, okay. Yeah, they can have backlogs, they can have delays there. But um that's how we usually just say roughly about three months. Mm -hmm. And once the another thing, once the transaction has reached the deeds office, the deeds office mm -hmm. itself can take plus minus two weeks. Okay. That's okay. if there are no delays on on um on the deeds office. Side. So it can take mm -hmm. plus minus two weeks for it to register. So once we've let you know that okay, we are good to go, we are lodging. So we'll let mm -hmm. you know okay today we lodge. Mm -hmm. So if we're lodging today, it can take about two weeks for the property to be registered in your name. Okay. But um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. another um another thing that people need to actually take into consideration is that um, with the banks, you know, let's say when you've received this bond, you've signed your documents, you're happy, you're ready, you think that, oh, the house is mine. Mm. The banks, anything can happen, you know. As long as the property has not yet registered in your name, anything uh -huh. can happen, the bank can withdraw that bond. So, so I, think, I think it's a good thing that you, because I actually didn't know that the bank was supposed to inspect. So they could go there and inspect and be like, nah, we're not, we're not, we're not financing, we're not funding this and withdraw. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so nothing that, like that. that and also um besides the inspecting of the property it can also be with the bank could send amended instructions you know th those things really do happen you know there and you receive an amended instruction where bond has already been given and bond approval has already been given and then maybe let's say two days before the client needs to come and sign then you receive an amended instruction you know, and an amended instruction can be a lot of things. Your interest rates would mm. have changed. And then now it's like, do you actually still afford? Or the yeah. bank could actually reassess um, reassess <laughs> the applicants, you know. And if you get reassessed then and you no longer qualify, then unfortunately, then the bank will withdraw. So there's there, there's a lot of things. That's why um, while you are still in the process of purchasing a house and your property hasn't registered, it's always advisable not to do like take any financial decisions that can actually yeah. weigh the bank if ever the bank does reassess oh. and then it can change the, the position. Because if they do a reassess and you maybe in the meantime bought a car, or car, yeah. or create a car or, then the bank will say, okay, no, affordability. We've seen it a lot yes. in like this way. Um, we've got a client, they already have bond approval, everything is fine, they've signed the documents, but then hey, the bank says wait, they've reassessed and then they withdraw and say no um based on affordability the client doesn't qualify anymore. Oof, okay that, that's a tough one i think that that's a good one because i think it's easy to think i think people are usually wise leading up to the point where they apply for like a bond because obviously you know you're trying to make sure that your ducks are in a row so that you look like a favorable person just on paper mm -hmm. and then you think ah once once you know the bank has said oh good to go now i can live my best life which i've been you know limiting myself from and then now yeah. you can, you dig a hole for yourself, basically, and and, and I'd like to believe that you know once one bank reassesses and and you fall off, you could find another one, but there's a chance that like they are all going to like you can't go back on the same terms that they they had at the beginning when you like comparing because they're probably also going to say okay fine, we're gonna have to redo this again and see if we can still offer you in the same terms. And then you know you might just end up end up there. Okay, so so mm -hmm. a question is. Who who pays for all this? Do I pay? Does the seller pay for this whole convincing part of it? Who pays? There's or is, it is it between me and the seller? Can we agree who covers the costs and stuff? Or there's difference. Well, the seller and the purchaser can also just agree how exactly okay. who will pay. But um, usually the purchaser pays for the transfer fees. So you'll okay. be paying as a purchaser, you'll be paying for the transfer fees, you'll be paying for the bond registration fees as well. Okay, okay. All and right, cool. if there's a bond cancellation involved, the seller's the one who would be paying for their yeah. bond cancellation fees. Okay, okay. So the transfer, well, duty, think... transfer, duty, transfer duty is paid by the, the purchaser, transfer costs are paid by the purchaser, bond registration costs paid by the purchaser, purchaser. bond cancellation costs paid, paid by, by the seller. 
Ah, uh, okay. I think I think that's perfect. I think you've done a great job at, at explaining this whole process, and and I think I understood it very well. So I had asked people to like send through some questions if they have one, and and someone sent through a question regarding transfer of ownership in parts to like a a partner. So if for whatever reason they decided to take you know the a mortgage alone, and then maybe now they've gotten married, or even if they're not married and they just wanna transfer in part to to a partner. Um, I think obviously, yes, that's possible because people can deal with their property as they wish. But can you talk us through that 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 process, if at all there's a process? Is it a simple, straightforward one? What are the considerations that one needs to take into account, if any, uh, just yeah, surrounding that? Um, OK, that question, that's like, for example, OK, so I'm assuming it's one person who purchased the property when they were on their own. Or maybe it's two people, but then one person basically purchased the property for affordability purposes as well to get a loan. Yeah. Um, in that case, we must remember that then that person is a sole owner of that property initially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so they want to bring a partner to become owner as well. Yeah. You basically you like transferring your half share to someone else. So mm -hmm. the ownership of that property actually changes as well. So instead of it just being um, full ownership of one person, now it's like co-ownership. Okay. And um, transferring your half share initially just kicks off the whole process. Okay. You know, because you're basically selling a half share that you have. So it's not something that's very easy, like you just say, oh, oh. No, this person did the title deed, <laughs> you know. But um, it differs. For example, if maybe you were a single person at the time, Mm -hmm. you are unmarried and then now you're married in community of property let's mm -hmm. say you got married in community of property and your partner um obviously your wife or your spouse your husband becomes um an owner as well there it doesn't it's not the convincing process from start to end because then then it's an endorsement you know there's a certain endorsement that it's an application you make an application to the to the deeds office and then you apply that they must please endorse um this person as well but okay. in the case where it's just, for example, let's say a random, it's not, it's not your husband, it's not your wife, it's just, let's say, a partner, or it's just you transferring a half a share to your daughter, to a friend, or to whoever. Okay. In that case, it kicks, starts the whole transferring process because you're so, transferring and you're spending your half share. You can donate it, you know, okay. you can donate that half share, but then that um, triggers donation tax. And okay. you don't really want donation type because it can be very high. So okay. essentially, it kicks us the whole transferring process again. So it's almost like uh, so it's like it's almost like I'm selling. So it's like the whole process just without the bond aspect of it, maybe. Or if if I took it on a bond, they also have to get involved. Do the um, banks the also bond, have to get involved? Because remember, um, the bank has a has an interest. In this, yeah. in this property, so changing ownership, anything that involves changing owners or whatever, the bank needs to be made away. So in that okay. case, for example, the bank would then like consent. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, okay. Basically. Yeah. So, but um, to do all of that, what happens is it triggers the convincing process because you are selling your half share of the property. Mm -hmm. So uh, without putting you in a spot, um, if if perfectly fine if you don't know the answer is would you say then it's better to just put it in a wheel and then they inherit it rather than try to like yeah. give them half whilst you are both still alive just like put it in a wheel if i die you, you you inherit it and keep it moving yes definitely definitely it's always better that's why with, um for example as well if you've got kids and then maybe you mm -hmm. want ownership to switch to your kids whatever it's always just better to just put it in a wheel you know bequeath that property to them in the world yeah okay amazing because uh, the whole convincing process remember there's there's transferring fees again yeah. involved that you also need to pay okay okay all right now thank you thank you so much i think I'll, I'll reiterate again i think you you really explained it in a way that i think will be easy for any and everyone to to understand and i, and I appre appreciate you taking the time to come and you know uh, educate us on on this whole process and, and all the all the best with you know with your exams um i think they're lucky to have you because I, I was actually looking at you speaking and and you know because because we we're friends and and we went to uni together you know 
when you when you now see like your your friends in their element it's always interesting to be like hey there goes to me look at her <laughs> days when we used to we have no idea what this exam was just about <laughs> yeah it's like the story with conditions like okay yeah and then we do this and remember and i'm just i'm watching you and thinking hmm it's such a full circle moment hey like it's, it's such a full circle and you know just the evidence of how like things just work out you know when you're new you don't even know like yes. what's gonna happen from here you know where am i gonna yeah, end up yeah. what type of flow am i gonna end up practicing and then mm-hmm. now and it's not the first time because I've, i've seen you and you've been you, the publications you've gone talking in places you know I, i see you and it's always just man it's fulfilling when when you see the people that you kind of started with like going out there and like you know living their their best professional lives and you look like you really enjoy what you do i hope you do uh and I and yeah i think they really like it here so i can thank you so much for taking the time to come i really I really appreciate it and yeah all the no, best no thank you um thanks for having me you 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 also doing you also doing great doing, girl doing great. <laughs> <laughs> you know as you say like it goes back to that thing where you said that um, we started journey i mean no you and i first me you know first person that i met at real yes when I yes first, yes actually <laughs> 2015 in January I remember exactly where I met you it must have been in the I think it was in the foyer or in the in that hall that we during orientation week in Kaki I remember yeah. vividly and I think we were we were first few first just to arrive and start unpacking and and what not so um no man it's been a journey it's it's, it it's really been a journey I've also seen you grow you know and it's 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 been very fulfilling to watch. Oh, it definitely has. And I know for sure that you're definitely making big moves that side. <laughs> I don't think you'll be hey, coming back. <laughs> we are trying to keep our head above the water. That's all I'm going to say. We're just keeping our head above the water. <laughs> But no shame man. It's 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 beautiful and and I appreciate um you know the the friendship that has You know to me and I you know we we who I've obviously moved away and we it's not like we like talk everything there but I always know that every time I, if I call on to me she's going to be there and just one of those like mm-hmm. friendships that have like survived everything at some point she moved away from Rez but that didn't you know it's yeah. just just been it's been a journey and and I, and I treasure it so much and the next time I'm in SA I have to make sure that I I I please <laughs> definitely time needs to be made <laughs> cool all right thank you so much thank you guys for watching as always um please like share and subscribe and if you have like any you know questions or comments please pop them in the in the you know comment section below and and hopefully dumi can can respond to some of them or i will you know pass them on to her and get her if you and not just like drop them in the comments but um thank you guys uh see you guys again next time